Right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Gillette here. Just wanted to give you a quick overview of how to set up OBS, or Open Broadcaster Software, uh, to work with Twitch TV. So, the main thing you need to know is, if you have experience using XSplit, this is very, very similar. It's just a slightly different UI. So, we'll start out by going over the basics, uh, how to compose a scene, uh, how to pull in objects to it, and then we'll go into actually setting up the Twitch connection, what settings you want to use, uh, and, and how it relates to your computer. So, to start out with, you have your scenes and your sources. Uh, I already have a few scenes set up, depending on what I use. Uh, if I change between these, it's going to change what's actually being recorded here, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but basically, uh, you can create multiple scenes, just like you can in XSplit, and these are going to be the different things you'll switch to if you're streaming. So right now I have this selected, and this is just doing a software capture from one of my monitors. But there are other things you can add in here. So if I want to add... Uh, an image, for example, I can do that. Uh, image name, browse, I'll just pull in this picture of Gary Gygax here. There you go, so you've got your image. Uh, same thing if you want to pull in webcams, that would be under video capture device. So this is my webcam here. Uh, you'll be able to see my smiling face, yay, exciting. So we'll just remove that because no one really wants to see that. Uh, there's also built-in game capture. Uh, now, just to touch on game capture briefly, this is the same type of thing that's called game source in XSplit, uh, but it's important to note that there are two versions of Open Broadcaster software. There's 32-bit and 64-bit. To use game capture, you have to be on the same uh, version of OBS that your game is. So with World of Warcraft, for example, if you're using the 64-bit version of World of Warcraft or the WoW-64.exe, you need to be using the 64-bit 64 64-bit 64 version of Open Broadcaster in order for Game Source to work with that. If you're streaming Diablo 3 though, and you want to use Game Source, that's only 32-bit, so you would need to use the 32-bit version of Open Broadcaster. Uh, that's really the only limitation. It just means if you're doing both those games, you'd need to change between them or you just want to do an entire monitor capture. So as I said right now this is just capturing one of my screens uh, so if I change this over and I want to add a different monitor for example so I'll change this to software capture uh, 2 well I'll just add another source uh, and I want to use my other monitor there we go that's simple you just need to to add that. Um, you can edit scenes and move things around just like you can in XSplit you just click edit scene, select which object you want to work with. Uh, you can change the order that they appear on top of each other just by going in here and hitting control up or down. Uh, so you can hide things behind other scenes if you wanted to. Um, there's a lot of options for what you can do with these. If you want to only capture subregions, uh, it has chroma key uh, similar to, to what XSplit does. So if you have a green screen behind you, for example, you can use that. Uh, and, and same with opacity settings, so this is my other monitor. If I want that to be mostly see-through, I can do that. So if you want to do an overlay on top of your stream that has your Twitch chat or something, uh, you can do it through there. So another option in this is global sources, and what this does is allow you to include something that will be used in every single scene that you ever set up. So again, we'll pull in Mr. Gygax here, this is an image. Uh, and he should show up here, unless I screwed something up. Uh, but anyway, I won't dwell on that. But l long story short, it should show up in all of your scenes when that scene is initially composed. Uh, so if in every single scene you ever create, you want your logo to show up in the top right corner, for example, you can do that. Uh, so uh, global sources aren't something I've really ever made use of, since each scene has different uses for me but you know, your mileage may vary. So let's pop into the settings here and take a look at what we need. So the first tab in here is general. This is just gonna be what you're gonna use to set up different profiles. So that will save different uh, option sets that you configure in each of the, uh, the following five uh, option tabs here. So the first place we'll go is into encoding. Quality balance, so this is basically how interpolated your stream is going to appear. There is not much reason to ever go past quality 8 that anyone has been able to find. Uh, the image quality improvement is not enough to actually warrant the increased CPU load. 
and for probably 99% of applications with this, going above quality 8, you really won't actually see any difference. Uh, if you go below about 6, you'll start to see a lot of, uh, not lag, but you'll see uh, a lot of frames overlapping with each other and a lot of motion blur, basically, but not in a, any sort of pretty sense. Uh, bit rates are going to need to be set based on what you consistently get when you upload to a Twitch server. So in my experience, my connection, despite being a 10 megabit upload, cannot really sustain more than about 2,500 to 3,000 uh, kilobytes per second going to Twitch's servers. Uh, whether that's on my end or that's something with Twitch's servers, I really don't know. Uh, but this, uh, as an example, like 2500 bit rate with 2750 buffer is more than enough to stream 720p. Realistically, this is probably about the, the highest you'd want to set if you're streaming to, uh, 720p. You could probably go up to 3000, but that's pushing it. If you're going to be streaming 1080p, you're going to want to look a bit higher. You're going to want to be able to sustain probably about 4 megabit constant uploads of 4000k uh, for bit rate and, and buffer. In my experience, having these two close to the same or exactly the same has given me the most reliable results, but again, your mileage may vary. For audio encoding, I just stick with the default AAC 128 bit rate. Had no complaints. It sounds very, very good on the other end. And honestly, if you're just streaming MP3s and game sound, that's probably about all you need anyway. And I doubt there's ever a reason to go above that if you're broadcasting voice. So the next tab here is your broadcast settings. Right now I have this set to file output since I'm using OBS to actually record this tutorial, but in most applications you're going to be using live stream. So in this case we're going to be using Twitch TV, since <laughs> own doesn't exist anymore and I've never even heard of the rest of these. So you're going to use FMS URL is going to be the actual Twitch server you're streaming to. What that means is uh, which of their locations. So generally you're going to want to pick the one that's closest geographically to you, but there's a very handy application out called JTV Ping, which I'll have a link to in the description below, which will actually go through and ping the servers and give you an idea of how consistent that ping is. So you have your last ping result to that server, your average ping to that server, and then jitter is basically the variance between your different tests. So I live in Ottawa, Ontario. So you know, in my mind, I was thinking that New York or Chicago is probably going to be the closest, but in reality, it's the Ashburn, Virginia servers that consistently give me the best results. So those are the ones I stream to. If you're really not sure of which it is or everything's pretty much the same, the global load balancing server is a decent default, but I'd strongly encourage you to stream to whichever one has the lowest consistent latency. Your play path slash stream key is what OBS will actually use to connect to your account. So you don't punch in your username and password anywhere in here, for example. Uh, so there's a link you need to go to with Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash broadcast. And I'll have that in the description below as well. You go there, you log into Twitch, and you'll get your stream key, which is just a long string of numbers and letters. And you'll paste that in here. And that's what will actually allow you to connect. Uh, auto reconnect if your stream drops if your connection drops this will pick it up right away in my experience this is much much more reliable than XSplit's equivalent of this so highly recommend having this checked off unless you don't want this to resume for whatever reason uh, auto reconnect timeout is is exactly that same thing if your internet's down for more than 10 seconds for example it just won't bother to try uh, delay, this can be useful if you're streaming tournaments specifically with you know FPS or RTS and you're worried about somebody watching or stream sniping, things along those lines. Add your delay here and you can choose any value you want in seconds, to my knowledge. I've never actually used it. Uh, dashboard link is just the link to the dashboard. You can set this up to save to a local file as well as streaming if you wish. Um, I'm not using that in this case. But if you want to, you can. So if you want to have a local recording of it and not just have to pull it off Twitch or something afterwards. Uh, so I'm not going to save my changes here. Moving on to the video tab. Base resolution, 9 times out of 10, well probably closer to 10 times out of 10, you want this to match the actual resolution of the screen you're streaming from. If you change the base resolution to something lower, you need to ensure that it's a, an exact multiple. So I have a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display. So if I was going to go lower, I'd probably want to go to 1440 by 900, for example, or 1280 by 800 for a resolution. 
I strongly recommend never changing this from the actual resolution for your display, otherwise you will have very, very bad quality in your stream. What you do want to use, however, is the resolution downscale option. This is what will actually affect what is being sent to Twitch. So you're capturing, in this case, at 1200p with my monitor. But what I actually want to stream to Twitch is going to be 800p, or which is pretty close to 720p. So I just co come through here and I select this. Uh, it takes a lot of bandwidth and CPU power to actually stream at 1080p or 1200p. So in, you know, you're going to have to play with it and see if that affects your stream, if that's something your, your CPU can handle. In order to stream 1080p, in my experience, you need one of the newer i7s, uh, so or even some of the high-end i5s, but in a lot of cases, you're going to need to be overclocked pretty extensively to be able to support that with any actual gaming. Uh, so in my case, I'm just streaming a pretty static image when I stream my Dungeons & Dragons sessions using a program called MapTool, so I'm able to stream at 1200p, but if I'm you know playing WoW or Diablo, I definitely cannot handle that. Uh, FPS, if you're streaming any sort of game that has constant movement, uh, again, we'll use WoW as an example, you most likely don't want to go below 30 FPS here, or it can look pretty choppy to the viewers. Uh, if you can handle 60 FPS, that, of course, looks looks the best. Uh, doing 1080p at 60 FPS is pretty unrealistic for a vast, vast majority of people, so generally, if you're streaming 1080p, you're going to want to look at about 30 FPS. Uh, another good midpoint to look at is about the 48 FPS mark, uh, which looks pretty good. I also recommend using the disable arrow at startup option here. Uh, the reason for that is a lot of games, specifically those that run in windowed mode, will show up on your stream as very jittery, and uh, it can actually have local performance effects as well. So if you don't mind dealing with a slightly different uh, style in windows when you're gaming, which most people won't, Highly, highly recommended, really good performance boost. The audio tab here is pretty self-explanatory. You're just picking what you want for your input. If you're using something like virtual audio cable, you'll be able to see your uh, VAC inputs here. So just select those. Otherwise, I just have this picking up the mic from my sound card. Uh, advanced, the last tab. Most people won't have a reason to come in here and change anything. I've made one or two tweaks. If you have a multi-core CPU or hyper-threading, you want to make sure the multi-threaded optimizations is checked off. Uh, I also, in here, have the process priority class set to high. What this means is if you go into Task Manager, you can actually take a look at uh, how processes are, are laid out and priority they get for processing. Generally, I set OBS and my game executables to high. It realistically doesn't make much difference at all, but... You know, I like to think it does. Um, X264 CPU presets, another one. If you have a very, very slow or older CPU, you want to be looking at super fast or ultra fast. But even on my system, which is a little bit dated, it's an i7-930 running at 3.7 gigahertz. Uh, very fast is, is more than sufficient for streaming at 720p. So that should cover most of the main things you need with this. Uh, Hopefully this turns out a bit better than the exploit tutorial I did, but if you do have any questions, please leave uh, a note in the comments below or send me a message here on YouTube, and I'll try my best to help you out. Uh, the other thing to note is that the Open Broadcaster uh, team is actually very, very good. So if you have enhancements, uh, enhancement requests, so new, new features you want to see in the product or changes made, uh, it's definitely, definitely recommended to let them know through feedback on their website or by email. And I'll have a link to their website in, in the, uh, the notes below as well. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully this is of use. And uh, as I said, comments. Uh